Item number SCP-6952, Security Level 4. Containment Class Safe, Secondary Class Farmu, Disruption Class Eki, Risk Class Notice. Assigned Site, Site 78. Site Director, Leah Victor. Research Head, Maria Johnston. Assigned Task Force, Omega-45, Street Samurai. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-6952 is kept within the armory of MTF Omega-45 Street Samurai's Barracks in Site-78. SCP-6952 is to be kept sealed within an elementite case when not in use, and may only be removed with authorization from members of Omega-45 or designated researchers who possess Level 5 clearance or above. Before construction begins, new entries within SCP-6952 must be approved first by the Ethics Committee, and instances of SCP-6952-1 shall only be used by members of Omega-45. In the event that a member of Omega-45 falls in combat, any SCP-6952-1 weaponry must be retrieved or scuttled at all costs. Foundation recovery sites are built around instances of SCP-6952-2 for the retrieval, and any discoveries of SCP-6952-2 by civilians should be promptly recovered and covered up. Witness amnestization should be applied as needed. Description SCP-6952 is a leather-bound book with metal covers, on the spine of SCP-6952 is an engraving that reads 6 of 9. SCP-6952 is a manual on the creation and development of anomalous weapons and armor, hereby classified as SCP-6952-1 instances. The creation of new instructions on SCP-6952-1 instances is triggered by writing on a blank page of the book, which will prompt the anomaly to start writing semantics forgery instructions, and usage guidelines. Currently, there are three known limits to the manual. It is unable to create weapons that can damage anomalies with indestructible or immortal properties and other books of the set of nine. Furthermore, queries to build weapons to target the author of SCP-6952 will not be answered. SCP-6952-2 instances are anomalous materials and devices that facilitate the anomalous properties of SCP-6952-1 weaponry. SCP-6952-2 instances are created along with SCP-6952-1 if the registered materials do not already exist. Repeated queries to the manual will lead to different SCP-6952-1s being created. These resources show promise for a variety of uses outside of weapons development, and research is currently ongoing in their application. Anecdotally, describing or asking for documents regarding the things that aren't considered weaponry will result in a failed query. The request must be distinctly for something like a sword, gun, bomb, or similar objects. SCP-6952 appears to be able to create more pages for its weapons if all of them are filled with queries. Instances of SCP-6952-1 that are approved by the Ethics Committee are allowed for usage by MTF Omega-45 to aid in the capture of anomalies and combat with hostile GOI units. This weaponry, provided by SCP-6952, has aided in the capture of over 50 anomalies thus far. Discovery SCP-6952 was discovered on May 3rd, 2022, by a mixed unit of Valkyries, all-female cyborg combat unit designed for infiltration, belonging to the Valrafin Corporation. This unit was deployed against GOI 8947, Folk Division, a mercenary group that was sighted using anomalous and unidentified weaponry. The Falkyries were successful in eliminating the mercenaries and retrieved SCP-6952 from their operating base. After returning SCP-6952 to Falraven, the High Table, Falraven Corporation's Board of Directors, 
contacted the O5 Council, offering to trade SCP-6952 for information on 6755. The following video transcript was declassified and made available to Level 5 personnel to place them on the situation informing the Set of Nine and the Valrafin Corporation. Video Log O5 Council Meeting Data Expunged Recording Started Greetings, CEO. We haven't spoken since the Cardigan Agreement was signed. I trust you're doing well. Our organization has been thriving, O5-1. Profits are high. Contracts are flowing. Can't complain. 1. I must state that I don't believe the Foundation would be extending unwanted cordiality towards mercenaries. 2. is right. If it wasn't for our pressure, the Corporation would still be employing anomalies in warfare without any regard for the veil and collateral damage. Our Foundation hands so plain of blood. Our clients hire us to put Tight normalcy when the foundation doesn't feel like getting their hands dirty. Let's not sidetrack into unproductive bickering. As I understand, Far Raven CEO has come to us with an offer. Let's waste no more of our precious time with nonsense. Well, and regardless of past disagreements, I was hoping to improve our relationship by offering the O5 a gesture of goodwill. I am going to offer you one of the books in the set of nine to shore up your defenses in light of the recent attack on one of your facilities by the Chaos Insurgency. Set of nine? I don't believe I'm familiar with this term. I believe he was referring to SCP-6419. I will send all of the Council development documentation. In regards to SCP-6419, Site 78 had theorized that there may be more books belonging to its set due to it apparently being sixth in a set of nine. Our Valkyries recently retrieved volume six, and after some examination, we concluded this anomaly should better be under Foundation's watch. We certainly admire the Foundation's compromise with worldwide security and peace, and we are always glad to contribute the best way we know. We only ask for some information in return. We choose it from whom? And I can't imagine it was a bloodless affair. We acquired it from the Volk Division. We noticed a sudden increase in the capacity for anomalous weapon smithing. We made sure to return them to baseline. At this rate, you may as well consider outsourcing some of your duties to us. A nerve. Don't act like you are a charity organization. The folks must have been up to something if somebody hired you to get rid of them. Probably squeezed some local government out of a significant amount of money. It was a very profitable venture, especially with Volume 6 in our hands. We've taken to calling it as Reese's Manual. It's a book that allows its user to write queries for weapons and armor. These queries will then be answered with weapon schematics and anomalous materials to create them. So you're already stripped it of everything useful and are trying to hand it off to us. Why not just keep it? We've determined that it is far more beneficial and profitable for us in the long term to have the SCP Foundation as a strong force in the world. And you have information relevant to us. What exactly are you asking for? We would like to request you share the SCP-6755 file with us. Once we have that intel, we'll transfer the book to your care. The Pale Lady, what exactly are you going to do with that information? That is classified. There's more you're not telling us. You walked into this conversation knowing full well there was a set of nine, as you called it, and a fact we had one in our possession. A good player never reveals all his cards. Now do we have a deal? All members passed their vote to determine if we should trade for Volume 6 in exchange for information on SCP-6755. Yay! One, four... Five, seven, nine, ten, eleven. 
nay, two, three, six, eight, twelve. Abstain, five. The majority has spoken. We will transfer that information to the high table shortly. We'll be glad you came to the right decision. We'll have a representative over with the cargo in 24 hours. Odin Olor Halar. Odin owns you all. A note from me, Sir Johnston. Well, I must admit I never heard of the Felfin Corporation before being assigned to this project, but now that I've been reading into them, their appearance in this is concerning. Alpha Wave and taking on GOI 8947, also known as Folk Division, may seem like the lesser of two evils. I would never trust these ravens. Anyone who used the term acceptable collateral damage to refer to civilian casualties should never be trusted. Hell, at least Primordial and Argus pretend to care about human rights, and they don't go around cosplaying as Vikings and shouting about Valhalla when killing people. Val Raven seems to be cut off a different cloth, in unhinged and concerning cloth. I was able to pick through what they created in the manual. Mostly, it was used to create more cybernetic augmentations for their soldiers. Arm-mounted guys and electric weaponry. Cognito hazards to disguise their agents in the field. And that's just the start of it. It's hard to know the true extent of what they learned from this, as their R&D could have extrapolated on the knowledge gained from this book. Addendum 69521, Curated List of Current SCP-69521 Instances Gaius Rifle Weapon Type Assault Rifle Firing Mode Full Auto 3 Round Burst Single Fire Effective Range Up to 1.5 Kilometers Projectile Speed 1120 Meters Per Second Mark 3.38 Ammunition 8mm tungsten anti-armor support. Magazine size, 50 round magazine. One battery rated for up to 800 shots. Required SCP-6952-2 instance. Corinno Fluorite. Author, Folk Division. Description. The Gaius rifle is a ballistics projection device shaped like a conventional rifle firearm, but uses a coil gun. Coil gun design incorporates electromagnetism in place of conventional gunpowder explosions. The bullets in a coil gun are not bullets, but simply solid ferromagnetic objects with aerodynamic shapes. This previously theoretical design would allow for higher speeds with deadlier ammunition. And with a superconductor, it needs very little maintenance due to few moving parts. Design in place of gunpowder propulsion. Inside the chassis of the gun is a series of coils wrapped around the barrel made from coronal fluorite, which is a metal with anomalous heat resistance and superconducting properties. Coronal fluorite lacks electrical resistance, allowing the coils to be more power efficient and generate enough magnetic pull to accelerate the projectile at supersonic speeds. Most frequently, the gun doesn't generate heat. A ferromagnetic projectile is provided by the magazine into the barrel. With an anomalous magnetic shield around the magazine's remaining ammunition to prevent the gun from ripping itself apart. To compensate for the added recoil of the higher speed projectile, kinetic dampeners were installed into the Gaius rifle's chassis by combining previous foundation designs with ones provided by SCP-6952. This result in a ballistics delivery system with less recoil than even many pistols. The rifle can be equipped with an underbarrel 38mm laser-guided Heat-9 high-explosive anti-tank. An explosive charge collapses a metal liner into a hot super-plastic jet to cut through armor. Rocket. Several variants have been developed for anti-personnel and anti-armor purposes. SCP-6952 Description Atomic Number 26 Symbol CFE Location Earl Mountains, Rocky Mountains, Himalayas To be determined Mounting Point 
10,000 degrees Celsius. Coronofluorite is an allotrope of iron found in mountainous regions where the atmospheric pressure is the lowest. It appears to act like regular iron under all circumstances except for an extremely high melting point, almost zero electrical resistance and superconducting capability. While this makes it harder to forge, the result is a superconductive metal allowing for the development of rail guns and coil guns. Other potential applications of this material are broad, from space exploration to deep core drilling. Researchers notes, if I'm being honest, I'm no gun expert, but the men and women of Omega-45 give it a thumbs up. The sheer force of bullet kinetic energy is highly effective against heavy layers of composite armor like that of tanks. And if that isn't good enough, you have the missile launcher. In the field, the weapon has been performed admirably. Our boys shred insurgency folks like paper, and the tungsten bullets don't bounce off of tougher, anomalous hides. P.S. The boys ache me on to try the thing. And oh boy, I never thought blowing up watermelons would be so much fun. Researcher Johnston. High Velocity Blade. Weapon Type. Bladed Weapon. Usage. UV Generator needs to be charged for 48 hours of use. Required SCP-6922 instance. Ultrasonic Vibration Generator. Author. Volk Division. Description. Utilizing an ultrasonic vibration generator, the affected blade begins to vibrate at a rate of 10,000 Hz. The intense vibration of the atomic structure of the blade causes the bonds of the target to disintegrate, leading to an easier cut. Foundation personnel combines a high carbon elementine blade with these generators to create weapons that can nearly cut through anything. Every high-velocity blade is fitted with a vibration-proof handle to prevent discomfort or harm to the user. Researchers notes: The high-velocity blades are quite an interesting development. We haven't yet come across a singular material that the blades can't cut through, although there is a limit to how much armor they can get through in a single swing. You can't cut a tank or a mech in half with this thing. That would be ridiculous. Researcher Johnston. Hephaestus grade body armor. Armor type. Helmet. Bullet resistant plate, etc. Required SCP-6952-2 instance. Alamantite. Author. Bulk Division. Design refined by SCP Armament Limited. Description. By using the anomalous properties of Alamantite, a metal with similar properties to graphene. The Foundation was able to create lighter weight bulletproof vests and plates for plate carriers that render a soldier nigh invincible from conventional weapons. The technology can be applied to all types of heavier metal armor and explosive proof suits. In applications where the Vestus great plate would be too heavy and impair the user, a powered exoskeleton was developed to aid the user in remaining protected and keeping mobility. SCP-6952-2 Description Chemical Formula B4A Hardness 38 GPA Fracture Toughness 6.5 MPa Location of Elementite Deposits Earth's Crust Composition is now 1% Elementite Preparations 2 B203 plus 7A to B4A plus 6AO. Alimentite is an anomalous metal being hailed by Foundation scientists as a new wonder metal. Compared to boron carbide, boron alimentide is twice as strong. Alimentine shows the properties of carbon with the added bonus of being able to be made into steel. Burn alimentide is a super dense, highly conductive material. It's great for making metal matrices, cutting tools, and most importantly, body armor. 
It's increased neutrino absorbing capability make it excellent for the construction of neutron bombs. In the event there is an anomaly that requires such dire measures. Matter displacing gauntlet. Weapon type. Glove. Effective range. 100 meters. Maximum mass transferred. 150 kilograms. Uses. 100 before needing to recharge the battery. Required SCP-6952-2 instance, Atomic Resonator. Author, Researcher Johnston. Description, the matter-displacing gauntlet utilizes the Atomic Resonator, an instance of SCP-6952-2, in order to teleport a target to the wearer at the speed of light. When activated, the resonator locks on to a chosen target, determined by their line of sight. The resonator then begins taking measures of the target's particles, position, moment, spin, and polarization, and then creates a copy of the user's current position, creating entanglement between them. This entangled information is stored as qubit. A way of storing quantum data, it is comprised of a zero and a one, rather than a traditional bit which only a one and a zero. A quantum channel is thus opened, and the target begins sending the information in qubits to the resonator to recreate the target at light speed. Once the resonator has created a perfect duplicate, it ensures the target was created with its original quantum state and discards the original target information. Thus, it is not true teleportation, but rather the recreation of data at another location. Researcher's Notes this was my attempt to see if I could use SCP-6952 to revolutionize particle science. And I think I've done it. This gauntlet perfects quantum teleportation and quantum entanglement on a macro scale. Just imagine the applications for what we can do with this technology. Full-scale teleporters, instant communication. I have very high hopes that this gauntlet could be the future of further quantum research. Researcher Johnston Bouncing Mary Bouncing Ball Grenade Weapon Type Explosive Blast Yield Varies Radius Varies Required SCP-6952-2 Instance Hacks Author Maria Johnston Description The Bouncing Mary has the shape of a regular rubber bouncing ball, but in reality, it is made of 95% scp 45 Security Constructed Pure Explosive Number 45 SCP-E45's Kinetic Absorption Property allows the ball to absorb the kinetic energy of its impacts, storing five times the initial energy inside of itself. When 15 bounces are reached, the explosive is primed and begins to glow. The user only needs to depress the trigger for 5 seconds to activate the 10 second fuse. It will automatically detonate on the next impact. SCP-4952-2 Description Primary Ingredient Hacks A Festus Anomalous Explosive Or Anomen Hexogen O2 N2 AH2 3 Description SCP-E45 is a plastic-sized explosive similar to C4 with an explosive power that is 2.4 times that of a kilogram of TNT before its anomalous property is activated. The addition of adamantite into the formula of RDX to the seventh power allows the material to anomalously store kinetic energy that is applied to it by a magnitude of five times. This allows users in the field to increase the blast yield without worrying about accidental detonation or having to use more SCP-E45. Researcher's Notes This one is my namesake. I based it on bouncing betting mines from World War II. I figured that I should make something out of the box, and I've always had a fondness for rubber bouncing balls. The men say that this has no technical advantage on the battlefield, but hey, it's a self-defense thing for me, so I'm keeping it. Hacks also works as well as a C4 replacement. Want larger bangs? Just throw the thing at a wall a few times. Researcher Johnston Addendum 
6252-2. Testing with the creation of SCP-6252-1 instances. On petition by Researcher Johnston, the Ethics Committee allowed for the attempted queries of more empathical requests of SCP-6952 to test its weapons-making capabilities. Query 1. Gaius Rifle with a Toaster Attachment. Result. Instructions for one Gaius Rifle with a toaster in the middle of the rifle's chassis. Toaster is powered from the Gaius Rifle's battery. Toaster works as normal. Query 2. Weaponized Butter. Result. SCP-6252 outlined a recipe for butter with a pH level of 1 comparable to 1.0 M sodium hydroxide. Query 3. A screwdriver. Result. SCP-6252 produced a guy's rival variant that fired screws as ammunition. It is believed that while screwdrivers are unable to be produced, mass drivers that fire screws are acceptable. Query 4. A bust of researcher Johnston. Result. Not applicable. Query 5. A kitchen fork. Result. SCP-6952 produced instructions for a trident. Query 6. A spoon. Result. Not applicable. Query 7. A weaponizable spoon. Result. Not applicable. Query 8. A door. Result. SCP-6952 produced instructions for a trap door into another dimension. The instance was not produced due to concern of not knowing what might come out of the other side. Query 9. Electric bread slicer. Result. Not applicable. Query 10. Electric Human Slicer Result SCP-6952 created instructions for an electrically powered knife that anonymously cut flesh better than it did bread. Conclusions Well, I'm glad this thing never runs out of paper with how much junk we filled it with. It appears that its purpose as a weapons manual is pretty strict. We can work around some definitions like turning a fork into what is essentially a weaponized fork. However, things that are strictly meant for tool or decoration purposes give bum results. Sometimes you can cheat it by wordplay or using certain prefixes, but other times nothing happens. Researcher Johnston Addendum 69523 Interview with Valkyrie Operative Thalistris On March 10th, the Foundation Retrieval Teams managed to geolocate the location of the Valkyrie Skirmish with the Volk Division. MTF Omega-45 was sent to retrieve any instances relating to SCP-6952 that were potentially left behind by either side. It appeared as though the area had been picked clean. Fifty Volk Division casualties were confirmed along with one Valkyrie. When the Valkyrie was approached, it suddenly came back online and started to whimper for help. This Valkyrie was later determined to be of the Greek branch of the Varavian Corporation, codename Kodaki Ton Skotominon, Raven of the Slain. This Valkyrie was willing to give information on the Varavian Corporation in exchange for asylum. Interview Log Valkyrie A04 Thalistris. AO4 is seated in front of Researcher Johnston. AO4's armor is reminiscent of a Greek hoplite, and she appears to be of Mediterranean descent. Stating my name for the record, Researcher Maria Johnston interviewing Falkyrie Operative Thalistris, number four of the Androlatiri, Destroyers of Men. Your pronunciation is good, Doctor. I assume you have questions about what happened on the mission. Yes, when we dealt with your organization before they were scant on details and the existence of you. Do you mind filling me in? I can. It was supposed to be a relatively simple op. Me and my commander, Hippolyte, were paired with two revolta, sword maiden to eliminate some folk mercenaries and take out their weapons workshop. And these Zvermoita, who I assume are Nordic branch, 
who were they exactly? One of them was the commander, Binhilda. Real hard ass from what I've seen of her. She was getting annoyed with her subordinate Sigrun during the whole mission. The folks had done something particularly bad to Sigrun. Not sure what, but she was really wild up to engage with them. Did that affect the mission at all? Not at all. We arrived at the workshop. Bin held up, and Sigrun snuck in and eliminated all of them. Me and Hippolyte were keeping guard outside. I had to admit, they were pretty capable for a bunch of fanatics. You don't think highly of the Nordic branch. Normally, you wouldn't catch me dead near one of those Nordic crows. They believe that going to Arthes is a bad thing, and that by dying in combat, they'll go to the land of the gods. That's madness. That's madness. Mount Olympus is reserved for immortals only. It's heresy to believe otherwise. Interesting, I wasn't aware that there were other religions in Valraven. There are plenty of pagan religions in Valraven. We have a Mesoamerican branch, Shinto, Greek, of course, and many more. We may call them by different names and worship them differently. All of us have different ideas about where we're going to end up after all this. But in the end of the day, Kokogon is just normally by different name, and the comparison can go on with all the other big snakes. It's the one thing that stops us from just tearing each other apart. That's a unique way of interpreting the theology. So what happened after Ben Hilda and Sigrun cleared the warehouse? We came to get the place ready for the retrieval team when we saw Ben Hilda scouting Sigrun. There was this corpse near Sigrun, absolutely torn apart. Ben Hilda was trying to tell her that her revenge mission against some guy named Gregory was going to get her killed. Sigrun, however, was gloating up but being able to get Gregory's unit information from the guy. Anyway, we told them both to show it, and that's when it happened. We got ambushed. They were waiting for you. I don't know how they knew, but the wolves were all over us. The operations department told us to get the hell out of there, but there were too many of them. I took a round from one of the rifles that ripped straight through my chassis, Head like hell. I know the kind you're talking about. Guys' weapons are terrifying. You don't know the half of it. Anyways, my commander tells them to leave me. Spartan philosophy, you see. We don't deserve to be saved from the battlefield. But Hilda and Sigrun disagreed. But my commander outranked them. My commander gave me one last task. Designate the explosives they had on the site and cover their escape. Scorched earth. And you did, even with injuries like that. Your body was absolutely torn apart by the time he found you. I cut them all down. Every one of those rabbit dogs. I made it to the cash and blew them all sky high. I had my golden coin on me to give the ferryman when I went out, but he never came. I guess my backup systems kept my organs alive long enough for you to find me. That's quite a story. Can you go back? Why do you want to stay with us? I'm a warrior, through and through, like the Athenians and Spartans before us. But for Raven, they don't have honor. Why would I want to be part of an organization that doesn't care about its soldiers? No one came back for me, not even the Sov Maya. That's completely understandable. You know, thinking about the way they recruited me, I was a soldier before. I was on a UN peacekeeping mission, and I lost my arms. Thought it would be the end of me. But then, the damned suit showed up with a contract. We'll give you a purpose, they said. You'll feast on the battlefield once more. So, what do I do? Of course, I said yes. I wanted my arms back. That's how they get you. They came to me because I couldn't say no, more like vultures rather than crows. Well, I'm preparing to offer you something. 
Your record shows that you are a capable warrior, and we need someone to train our MTF in case the Cardigana Agreement goes sour. Talistris, I'm offering you a place in one of our mobile task forces. My boys call themselves the Street Samurai. Would you like to join? It's better than sitting in one of your containment cells for the rest of my life. Excellent. It will take a while to get the paperwork approved. This is a bit of an unusual move, but I want the best of the best in Omega 45. You'll also probably have to have a fail safe installed in your cybernetics, like an easy shut off. I'll do whatever it takes. I'm no stranger to having hardware installed. Hopefully, our partnership will be better than my last one. End recording. After the interview, Researcher Johnston sent a petition to Site Director Victor to have AO4 join MTF Omega-45. The application is still pending. From the office of Site Director Leah Richter, the following notice has been disseminated to all personnel employed within Site-78. Attention to all staff. Due to your involvement to the Valraven Corporation in the effort to retrieve the remaining books in the set of nine, all mobile task forces are to be on high alert for Valraven interference in our containment operations. All MTFs are not to engage with Valraven personnel in combat unless instructed in order has been given down by the Overseer Council. The Cartagena Agreement prevents us from open conflict but it made clear through their actions that, like with the insurgency and folk division before them, they are attempting to locate the missing volumes in the set. We do not need to break a long-standing agreement without reason, but we cannot allow any of these volumes to fall into their hands. Containing the set is now this site's utmost priority, and when it comes a day where we must fight the foul raven for control of the set, we will be ready. Site 78, please remain vigilant. These are troubling times. Hello, Greg. It has been a bit since our last correspondence. I apologize that I've been so tight-lipped on specifics on SCP-6952. Its classification as Thaumiel has necessitated level 4 clearance. I've been trying to get Director Richter to relent, given that SCP-6952 is part of the ongoing research into the set. However, she seems adamant that your eclectic personality isn't the right fit. Now, in regards to SCP-6952's connections with the set, I can say that with SCP-6419 formerly in the hands of the Chaos Insurgency and the Falraven Corporation having knowledge of SCP-6952 before they retrieved it, I think something might be cooking in the GOI community that we just aren't aware of yet. We tried looking to see if we could exploit the rift between the main Arctic branch of Valraven with their overseas branches to see if any of them would give up something, but that turned up empty. The true author of these books evades us still. In addition, I received your list of queries and I was permitted to test them. It wouldn't reveal the identity of or make weapons that could kill its author. I am not suggesting trying to eliminate the author yet. But, if we know what kind of weapons could kill them, we could infer their identity. SCP-6952 would not make weapons that could destroy other books in the set. It won't respond to queries it can't make weapons for. If this thing has sentience, we haven't found any evidence of it. I hope that answers some of your questions. I'll keep you posted on any further developments.